Don't let me accept it. Yeah, okay. Hmm, okay. So, what exactly is a Python? In very simple words, I'll define it that it is a high level dynamic programming language which is interpreted, right? And it was created by Van Rossum in 1989 and he's also called as the father of this programming language Python, right? And when he was creating this or you can say uh, when he was developing this, he had a very simple goals in mind that it should be easy looking code and uh, it should be readable and an open source platform, right? And you can see like Python is ranked as the third most prominent language followed by the JavaScript and Java, right? Uh, in the survey which was even held in 2018 right, by Stack Overflow, okay? So what is Python? Right. General purpose, interpreted language with easy syntax and dynamic semantics. You might be better aware of the things because you, uh, may, mostly of you have used it, okay? Getting ahead. Now some features, what you can see here is less code, platform independent, massive community supports, ease of learnings and prepared libraries. Okay, uh, just a minute. Okay. Hmm. So the language preferred by the beginners and the pros. Pros is nothing but the professionals, or the Python developers, or the uh, projects where it has been used. Mostly, it has been used, right? Okay. Next, you can see it is an open source language. It makes it free for everyone to use. All right. So when it comes with the open source language OSL, how many of you know about Floss? Anyone who know the full form of Floss? Yeah. Quick. Floss. Anyone? F L O W S. All right, it's easy. Free library, open source softwares. W whatever the softwares are free now, called as Floss. Next, so you can access your codes from mobile applications. You can access your codes from the web develop. Uh, you can say desktops and websites and monitors even so mobile application web applications and desktop applications too that has been the most important thing and next the communities as you know the uh, features and libraries you are going to learn right so that is the most important thing right so community are very large in python and uh, daily these are being updated all right so let's quickly understand the features of the python Okay, the very first one, which is your simplicity. So we say that you think you have to think less for your syntax of the language, as I said, and you have to think more for your code. So no need of uh, defining any such data types and all the things, right? Okay, next we have open source. So where you say the powerful language and it's easy and hassle free to use for everyone as needed, right? Next, portability in the terms, you could say that when we uh, are writing any codes in C, C++, C Sharps, in Java, in HTML, if you want to convert up the things here, we can easily do with that, right? If you have experience with those things in Jupyter, so we can easily do, do that, right? So that is your portability is that codes can be shared and it work in the same way as it was invented too, okay? The same intent and uh, it should be hassle-free and seamless. Next, we can say embedded and extensible. Now, this Python can have snippets of other languages inside it to perform some certain functions. Okay, like um, C sharp to C++, any uh, py to C++, okay, like that in the codes. Next is interpreted, you all know, right? The language is interpreted language, right? So the worries of large memory task and other um, heavy CPU tasks are being taken care by Python itself. So leaving you to worry only about the codes and that, right? Next, the library sections, what are you going to learn in the upcoming days? Like scikit-learns, map.lib, pandas, uh, scikit-images, and uh, the scipy, the numpy, right? Simpy and all, right? so that things you are going to learn. 
And this works in data science and AI, AI ML sectors, both of their right web development and what are the things we will be learning in the next days. So, okay. OOPs, object oriented programming, so which helps you breaking down real life problems into a way that can be coded and then it can be used to solve to obtain the solutions. All right. So if I uh, make a sum of your all features, what I can see on the screen, uh, so I'll say it, the Python has a simple syntax, is readable and has a great community support. That is the three main important thing what I discussed in the previous things. Okay. Next is where is Python uh, used in the industries, right? So whenever you search for anything in the web, right? Let's say you search for machine learning, you search for AI, and you search for Python even, right? Let's say you are searching for Python. So what the very first beginning thing you are going to get there is python.org, the very first link, right? Because it is an official link and also the most visited link for Python, right? Or if you like, uh, if you are writing uh, download Python, you'll be getting the same thing, right? And all the list of the websites which have even one single word included as a keyword as a Python. All right, that is the working. So that is being used by Google also on the basis of the ranks of the website sortings that is called as Dropbox, the server client messages and applications uses the Python. Next is if the Netflix, you might know your AI and the students and all your learning the clustering methods are there in the machine learnings, right? So you do learning supervised one, but still the clustering method is being used. See clustering, what is the best example I can give you? Like see, uh, if in a class of uh, 60 students, 50 students, if I say 10 likes to play cricket, 10 likes to play football and uh, 10 to 5 likes to play uh, badminton and all. So what we are going to do is we are going to create a sum or you can say we are going to create a cluster or a group of these people who likes to play cricket, who likes to play uh, football, who likes to play badminton and then it would be a group of the things, right? So we can say cluster of the things. So how this Netflix uses this like uh, and any other e-commerce websites uses this like once you go to their website or their applications, you open it and you see the things of your interest, right? So the user, uh, you can say the uh, website or the application comes to understand that in the way of the things like they can to understand like uh, if you are selecting three different horror movies in Netflix in the beginning of your sign in, right? So what happens like uh, next time whenever you come there, you will find all the horror movies of the things, right? Like the preferred language is true. If you are only searching for horror movies in Hindi, horror movies in English, any other formats so basis on the basis of your interest it, it tries to make a cluster and that cluster is being done on the basis of an algorithm called as clustering okay and that is a kind of an unsupervised learning which comes inside the machine learning part okay moving up next encryptions and the decryptions working of the cyber security analysis are being done using the NSAs Next we come to BitTorrent where if you download any files looking at the peer to peers or a lot of files are being downloaded and then they are being combined to have a single file that is your Python file. Okay. If you have noticed, if not, then you download something from BitTorrent and then see it. Then the scientific calculations I'm talking about like SciPs, NumPies and a lot more different libraries are there, right, that are using again done using the python libraries part okay so in the two days we'll be going with the python basics right and then assignments too are there for you to complete it right so variables we'll be discussing the data types and operators nothing but we'll be having it like in a common discussion so that what do you know about the basics and what you should know about the basics that's it right arrays and flow controls their methods and the file handling parts and the object oriented programming and their practices then what are the career opportunities in Python you people are having in next days, right? Next years. So you can have in the AI data science sectors, you can have in the big data, you can have in game development, the website, uh, web things and the smart devices, IoT kind of things, okay? And the web development and frameworks, even. all right, moving ahead. So uh, if you can see that the top languages, you can find the Python here in the, right? So, 
uh, here experience now uh, if you have, have any interest in working as a python developer what do we say that the things or if you have any interest in working in any field what the first thing you need is your experience uh, if you're python developer if you talk about the experience uh, the experience python developer earns around an average of rupees 500k in India and in the median, if you say of the US as compared with 88 dollars, sorry, thousand dollars, 88k, right? And the experience you can see the BPDs I'll be sharing it to you can go there. The experience level of a software engineer and even the Python developer, you can say here as an uh, you can have like one to four years experience of 500k plus and five to nine years of one million and then as I say. And if you are in a very uh, good experienced level and you're not working in a good location as per your experience, right? So if I say even if you're having a 10 years experience in Python and you're not working in this Gurgaon, Bangalore, New Delhi, Pune, Mumbai sections, then obviously your salary on the basis would be less, right? Because experience matters, but also the location matters. And with these two things, the most important thing matters is that skill set. That is on the basis of experience and on the basis of your locations. Sorry. On the basis of your locations. The uh, next skills what you, you should have at like AWS, Django's, APIs, Docker's and all. Okay. All right. So these things you also you have to know it. Uh, someone has something, something. Yeah, course AI ML. Correct. All right. So these things are important. Here. Now I guess that the basics of Python would be clear to everyone, right? No doubts at all for the sections. I guess so. Right, so uh, let's come to the Jupyter section. How many of you know how to the how to run the Jupyter commands and all? Everyone, most of you, I guess. Cool. If not, you can go to Kaggle. You can go to Google Apps too. Alright, so everyone can see this uh, one in your systems. You are opening Jupyter. How many of you have opened the Jupyter right now? We are discussing now the operators, the basics you might know. Yeah. How many of you have opened this Jupyter?
five. Quick, guys, everyone open it. cool now uh, come here and create a new file and tell me if you can see this one the basics of the Jupyter we will be discussing how many of you can, uh, can see this one in your Jupyter quick No one. Nothing but the line number it is. How many of you can see? Speak anyone quick. You can see this one in your system, in your Jupyter. Can't see one. Don't write this one. I'm, I'm not saying by writing one. Just don't write anything, and but still, if you can see it, tell me. Can't see, can't see. Okay, fine. If not, then just write can't see, no sir, okay. What do the rest? No one here, sir. I see. Uh, these are nothing but the line numbers. For the line numbers, what you have to do is see the basics. I am just writing up, right? Here, everyone. All right. You can see this escape plus L in a different highlighted format. What is that? It's nothing but the code. So the ways of writing is very much useful from the beginning of the class. You should know this, right? The line number shortcut is escape plus L. If you write, if you press escape plus L, uh, this is be removed. And if you again press it, it will come there, right? That's the thing. See, if you can see it, 
right all right uh, next is again the working of the codes the working of the markdowns the working of the raw nv networks and the headings so markdowns and this uh, headings and nv converts work in the same way in this section i am talking about okay so you can go there and you can this section code one i am saying right if you click there you will be getting code markdown nv convert and heading i guess you can see it there okay so uh, let's say if this is a code one if i'm writing some codes let's say two plus three if i'm writing i'll just run it and we're looking onto the output there's a five so in the first section what i can see here is input of one which is nothing but an input right and the first input i have shared and then the uh, first output what i have got right the next line numbers again there so we'll be removing it not now needed so multiplying six multiplied by seven uh this is again a divide by four something you get some float values hmm? okay so these are the things like if you want to make an heading so you can press escape of three if you want to write an heading of right so h1 to h6 you have an heading format over there so let's say this is an heading three so this is heading three all right it's the format we did an h4 just escape and then the hashtags that is your that comes in the four right let's see how simple it is like if you want an four hashtags what do you have to do escape four five you want till six it is there right six you want escape six that is best if you want seven would you be adding a seven it will not work so only till three two six five it will work Okay, one two six. All right, everyone can do this one. What I have shared it till now. What I have done. Easy. Compatible with everyone. Cool. All right. So uh, let's go with some of the basic operators and all. Okay, you have understood how the things will be going on. So let's come to the operators. Yeah. So who, who is going to tell me how many operators are there in Python? And what does operators does? Yeah. Anyone quick. Is going to tell what is an operator, what is the working of that operator. Mm -hmm. well, I can see four operators, okay. Right. Eight, three. Perform operation on the operands. Seven operators. All right, leave it. Uh, okay, anyone please unmute and speak out. Okay, let's ask to the Ayush Panchal. Ayush Panchal, tell me one operator name. Some technical issues. Speak out. Abhiral Sharma, tell me one operator name. Simple operator of Python. Seven eight seven eight seven eight, seven, eight is going there. Three four. Eight assignment operators. Mm. CC. All right. Coming to the first basic operator, that is your arithmetic operator. 
first one right so let's run this arithmetic operator let's discuss what are the things over there right so plus multiplication divisions and uh, integer divisions and your exponentiation values right these things are there right like 2 plus 3 I'm just writing all the things okay So these are the four basics, the results you can see. After this, you have modulus operator, you have exponential operators, and you have integer divisions operators, right? Three, like the four when divided, divided by five. Now we got 0 0.8, right? Now if I run this, it will be getting zero only, okay? Next is two to the power of three, very simple I'm writing. I guess you know the basics of this all, but it's just too easy. And then you can have it like uh, 100 when divided by 3 leaves the remainder something as. I love this. So 4 divided by 5 is giving you 0 as I said, to the power of 3 is it's 8, and 100 divided by 3 gives you the remainder as 1. That is the working of all the operands. Clear to everyone? Here you are getting 0. Why? Because an integer division 0 0.8. Okay. Integer 0 0.8 is a float, and here you are getting an integer. I guess yes, you might be having it this minute. <laughs> All right, I guess. Okay. Uh, now the second operators. Anyone quick name? Assignment operators. Let's go. No, not to the assignment. Let's go to the uh, comparison operators. In the comparison operator, what happens? We do compare the things, relations between them, right? Okay. So if I say three is greater than five or not, four is lesser than six or not, five is equal equals to seven or not, five is not equals to seven, right? The boolean results you'll be getting false and true. Hmm? What else are there? Right? equals to greater than greater than equals to less than equals to that things right even if one condition becomes true you'll be getting a true result okay. next comes to assignment operator here what you do is assign the values right I say x is equals to 5, then x plus equals to 5. What would be the value of x? 10. Oops. 10, right? Okay. Now next. Same in the same way if I can give the values to the different kind of assignment operators. Plus equals to means x is equals to x plus 5. This is the meaning of what? You know, comments, right?
So this is the meaning of this x. Now it will be 15 obviously. Okay. All right. Next. Possibly the results would be there for you. Oops. Was problem. Invalid syntax. Okay. 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 I have been assigning to both things in the one, right? It has been converted in double data in the problem. Y equals two. Let's say seven, and then y plus equals to three. That is the value of y you would be getting now. Okay, same. Y divided by equals to five. Y subtract equals to three. Y multiplied by equals to one. Invalid syntax obviously one by one you can do it right so after every line print y print y you see the results are there multiplied by 15 48.0 okay like that these are the assignment operators so basics of the question now if I want uh, in the assignments you'll be getting some questions over there for calendars and for time times okay and if I say you an example for there like uh, print me the calendar of okay this month that is January 2021 what would be the code we have to use a library module or that modules okay so we're using import Everyone run this code and tell me if it is running or not. Hmm, run this. Check if it is running or not. What are the rest?
one two out of nineteen quick guys you can see the January 2021 Uh, you can see yes from most of them cool now in the same way guys if you have been asked to print a calendar of a total year what is this sweet beauty one and one nothing but if I want to print a calendar of any particular month and year so let's say month is equals to five and the year I want is of 2022 so I'll be just printing a print me a calendar of a month where the you know the first uh, year and then the month would be written and in the same way you'll be getting it okay so may 2022 uh, calendar is being presented clear i guess so it is clear right in the same way if i say that if you have been asked to print a calendar of a total year so you need to just write print a calendar dot calendar of that year let's say this is the current uh, next year is the current working year so i'll be taking it of 2022 and then 2022 has got all these things right all the months and that's the result what you'll be getting there right i guess it's clear yeah cool so this will be coming and what all the directories are there in your uh, this module you can just check at the directory of uh, this calendar so all the functions and all will be getting to you like here you can see day name first week day formats and all and you're gonna get a help of that to write like calendar dot like if you want to see the day name you can just write day underscore of name how it works so it will be giving you an uh, help of like how it will be working so list of week references to the object right like this you can get the uh, things over there uh, name and day underscore first week day let's say So get first weekday method of calendar take calendar instances right all right like that what are you asking why we are using operator which means that's zoom in why we are using dot operator okay fine dot is uh, not an operator there that is uh, just like a part of that uh, module if i say that uh, you are from uh, let's say aiml batch right so basically you are in you are registered in edufabrica and from there in the uh, like December or January batch, whatever it is, December batch, and inside the December batch, you are from the AIML class. Clear out. So, if I want to get an help of the first week day function, which function is in? What is that? That is a function of what? Module. That is calendar module. 
right? So I have to write inside this, let's say this is the main working thing, with inside this, this exists, and inside this, this exists, right? So I want to write and help of first week, they would not come, right? So I have to write inside the help of calendar module, in the calendar module, the first week, they how it works. Like if I'm working with the strings, I would be writing help of str of uh, lower function, lower function. So what lower works, it returns a copy for string converted to lowercase. If what if I just write help of lower? So name lower is not defined obviously, right? Did you write that in the str function, that is string function lower exists, right? Clear to you? I think yes, you are clear. Very nice. Similar to that, you can go with the date and time modules, guys, and that is also easy. Like, you need to just import that date and time. And then you can print date time for now. So now date and time is 4 1 2021 and 20.49.38 amps. That's the milliseconds over there. Microseconds we say, right? And the parameters of their state and time, you can just go to the directory of that and would be easy for date and time, have a lot of things to exist, right? And then you can see T zone info, T Z I N O. Uh, you can import this uh, this P Y T Z that is Python time zone. So if, I, if you can go with the help of the directory of that too, so you can get to the directories of this P Y T Z functions, and and you can see a lot of things, right? So common time zones, country names, and all. If you want to see it, right? I'll be just printing uh, print the directory of this pytz dot the country names oops just a minute so a lot of country names are there like country name Australia right AU for the Australias so like you're writing AU you're getting an Australia one if I write something like that, let's see. Oh, nothing comes over there, right? So what I have to do is P Y T Z dot. So it is for Australia. If I write I N, it's for India, right? The course, you know, that other things are right. So come uh, the uh, country names for that. So you can go with the help info for P Y T Z. Time zones, if you want for the time zones of different different areas, uh, we could be uh, working as like uh, TZ info or country time zones would be a better one. Oops, spelling error. So country time zones has been defined, see NZ for Pacific clans and all the different things let's see the directory of that would be helping you much better there and this could be like this oh, okay some brackets issues are there and again an issue should not come there but these are not country names Okay, if it is not working, then we can just go to all of the time zones, it would work. Still, the same thing. I guess here if you get something. Alright, fine. So you get all the time zones here. 
for different different areas and all respective so if we get to get the, the country time zones even if uh, we get it you already know that it's country time zones functions one is missing like if i get a take it as in us slash indiana straight what it says uh, here is there okay for the country time zone of the au australia a lot of australia time zones have been defined for that right similar to pytz dot uh, you know like country time zone if i take it there country time zones and i need for india we're just taking it i and work it there and any issue will cover it in one right so in the ways you have to uh, you know like see the things for the basics right tomorrow we'll be going with the sets and the data types of all to there i'll be sharing you the link for this um, you know the assignment part and then you can go through that to right and that would be helpful for you even to complete the, the things so i'll be sharing it with you with the links and all classroom after this class right so i hope you don't have any doubts anyone is having it then can tell me right uh, let me stop the recording